welcome back to the Cardano Minute. My name is Tony, and we're about to break away for an important announcement from our fearless leader, Charles Hoskinson. Take it away, Charles. This has definitely been the busiest year of my life. Um, you know, we spent five years in deep R&D and development, and we kept building and building and building and building, and everybody ignored us. And they're like, oh, you're just a wallet, ah, you know, you're, you know whatever. And uh, this is the year we launched staking, and we actually fully decentralized the entire system. And um, we now have 1,200 stake pool operators, hundreds of thousands of wallets around there. And uh, we have all this amazing infrastructure we built from this new accounting system called Extended ETXO to a completely different way of doing networking to a completely different way of doing smart contracts. And so now that we're kind of clearing Shelly, the and mission accomplished there, and we have the best in class staking mechanism, and we're fully running on proof of stake. and will be fully decentralized by March. We're about 68% decentralized. Every few days, it uh, goes down a little bit. Sorry, uh, what does that mean exactly, uh, 68% decentralized? We're running a hybrid system. So currently at the moment, 32% of the blocks are made by a federation of actors, similar to how Ripple manages its consensus. And uh, those are controlled by Mergo, IOHK, and CF. And 68% of blocks are made by the actual stake pools through Warhorse Prowse, so our consensus oh. algorithm. And uh, that, that was originally zero, 100% you know, of the blocks were made in July. And so every five days, every epic, it decays a little bit. And so more blocks get made by the community and we, uh, we uh, make less blocks. So it was kind of like training wheels because we had to figure out how do you transition from a static and federated system to a dynamic and decentralized system? And how do you guarantee quality of service and actually that the network is stable and so forth? Because you, know, you can't just switch from one to the other and hope that the network will uh, be, be where it needs to be. You need some evidence of that. And so at the rate of decay of uh, decentralization, uh, we should actually have the system 100% of the blocks made by the community uh, by March, which is exactly what we intended. So it's been actually one of the smoothest ways of transitioning from a static and federated system to a dynamic system. And it'd be almost like Ripple did this or you know, Ethereum is trying to do this with F2. It is not easy in practice to change the wheels of a car while it's driving. Uh, but what's nice is we actually have a measure, you know, you just look at the total amount of blocks per epic and you see how many are made by the community and how many are made by the BFT nodes. And uh, now it's 6832. The big milestone was last month when we broke 5050. So the majority of the blocks are now made by the uh, community. And that's just such an exciting thing. We've actually covered a couple of articles of projects with our DeFi going to Cardano, or pledging to go to Cardano at least. And, uh, I'm curious, of course, like, what do you think of this uh, sector? It's kind of came a little bit out of nowhere in 2020. It was obviously building on top of a lot of work from previous years. But do you think that Cardano should attract DeFi? Well, DeFi is a product without a customer at the moment. And so you have to create a customer base for it. And we're actually, I think, the only mainstream project in the top 10 that has a real strategy for how to get real customers for DeFi. And that's a unique advantage we have when people have DeFi and they want to deploy or use us. They say, well, who's actually going to do peer-to-peer -peer loans? Who's actually going to do peer-to-peer -peer insurance? Who's actually going to do peer-to-peer -peer payments or you know, use a stable coin or you know, a DEX or these things? Look, I got news for you. It's not a guy living in New York. You know, they already have systems. Those systems are highly regulated. They're quite efficient. They have low transaction fees. So it's the people who live in Ghana. It's the people who live in Ethiopia. It's the people who live in Uganda. 70% of these populations are at or under the age of 30. They're internet enabled. They're digitized. They're westernized. They understand how the world works. They just have broken systems, capital controls, and markets that are junk. So they're not just not going to accept it and say, oh, well, will just be poor. No, if people don't do that. Necessity is the mother of invention. So they're looking actively for new currencies and new financial systems and new lending systems and to be their own bank and to be in control of their own money. 